Good afternoon. My name is Chris Poor. I'm from Assured Information Security. And today I'll be going over Fissure, the RF framework. Uh, I think you'll really like it because it's, uh, it's meant for everyone. So there's something in there you'll find to your liking. Uh, I'll, I'll go over what it is, some of the core principles. We'll go into a little detail about what each component does, how much GNU radio integration is actually in there. And I'll talk about the roadmap, what we're doing in the future, and how you, you can contribute. So the, the main point of this talk is just to introduce you to the software and to tell you how to talk to me in the future about your ideas and how we can make this product even better. So what is Fissure? It's an open source RF and reverse engineering framework. It contains hooks for signal detection, classification, protocol discovery, attack execution, vulnerability analysis, automation, AI, ML. It does a lot. And it also kind of consolidates all things RF. So that's software modules, radios, protocols, signal data, scripts, flow graphs, reference material, third-party tools. It's really become a source for keeping everything together in one place. And it's real nice for people to get set up with something that just, that just works right off the bat. So the, the, the main uh, theme for Fissure is that it's meant to characterize, speed up the characterization of signals and the identification of vulnerabilities and protocols, waveforms, and devices. That's kind of what's inside the tabs of that GUI. So on the right is uh, our different pictures of those tabs. It's just one big main GUI with a bunch of tabs that do different features. And it's written mostly in Python and PyQt, and it has support for legacy systems for different versions of Ubuntu and Python and PyQt. So it's it trying to uh, make it easy for just about anyone to get up and get it installed and get it working. And it comes with a out of, out of the box, and I hope someday to be a completely pain-free installer. I understand there's a lot there's a lot to it. We're working on everything we can. And it's meant for everyone, in my opinion, for experts, for beginners. You, it's designed so that you can go in and edit the pieces on your own and make it suit your needs. It's, it's fairly new. It's only been out a month and a half. Uh, we were at DEF CON on August 12th at the Demo Labs. Uh, some of you were there. I, I've seen you there. Um, so thanks for, for going to that. And yeah, there's also a video online from the Griffiths Institute from like a year and a half ago. That's kind of outdated. You know, a lot has changed since then, so I'm not actively telling people to go watch that video, but it's there if you're, if you're Googling for it. And uh, we were also at another C4 cyber conference. But uh, the main way to get to Fissure is the GitHub page. And if you want to leave comments, you can go to the discussions page. You can write something in the issues. Uh, I'm on Twitter. So you can follow the status of the project there. There's a Discord we set up. That is a great way to just talk directly with me. You can get to that from the readme. Then on chat.gnuradio.org, my username is cpor1. If you direct message me there, I will get it, and I'll see it, and I can respond to you. <laughs> we made a Reddit, uh, for what it's worth. And then uh, in the future, uh, more documentation and videos and uh, user manuals and APIs that aren't already included in under like the help menu will be located at my company's website at infosec.com. So that's that's coming up short term. Uh, to understand Fissure, it's kind of important to have some context about where I'm coming from. I'm an electrical engineer at a cybersecurity company, and we do a lot of different things, as you can see there listed. I've worked on RF projects my entire career. I'm constantly jumping around different technologies with each project. It's fun, it keeps things interesting. I'm always going new places and, and seeing some pretty cool things. But I also work for a small team that's responsible for characterizing systems, assessing security, exploiting and interacting with targets, performing research, and developing tools. And we, we develop these tools and we do these cool things. We go around and we teach people and uh, and try to just show our knowledge to other people so that you can kind of see why a tool like this is important for me in my daily work. So I use this tool all the time. What is Fissure? It's a 
frequency independent SDR based signal understanding and reverse engineering. We uh, we needed a word that started with F and uh, the guy that came up with it wanted to make a like a literal pain in the ass to do a Google image search on it. So I apologize for that. Uh, it started from a 2014 project that was responsible for designing a, uh, a flexible system for automatic RF device assessment. And since then we've dedicated internal research and development over years to uh, make it more of an in-house lab tool. And now we're, we're releasing it to the, to the public. What does it look like? It's a uh, PyQT GUI, like I showed you earlier. Uh, and it has several dedicated Python components communicating to each other over a network. It uses ZMQ and it talks to a central hub, which kind of passes the information along. Uh, there's a nice YAML schema for input and sanitization and air handling. So if you have a new component and it has clear inputs and outputs, you could uh, make a nice simple Python wrapper and a YAML file, and you can instantly add it to this framework with, with very little work. Why are we extending it to the open source community? We, well, I'm doing it to help people. I think this software is going to help a lot of people. It makes all our jobs easier. It brings in outside knowledge to me, so it's kind of dumb for me not to release it, in my opinion. And I'm hoping it benefits future generations and has a, a bigger impact, bigger role in education. And again, uh, revolutionized engineering and cybersecurity. I kind of feel like in the cybersecurity world, the RF and wireless aspect of it is kind of underrepresented. And I think this will help raise it up to the to the rest of the level of everything else. Uh, Fisher is pretty broad, but as long as it kind of follows these elemental principles, it, it can it can go into Fisher. Uh, again, to speed up signal characterization, help with identification of vulnerabilities and protocols of devices. We also want to have other people's tools be easily integrated, utilize commercial SDRs to help as many people as possible be a test bed for AI and ML, be flexible, uh, easy to use, helpful visualizations, be modular and have things com communicate over a network and uh, just be simple, transparent and easy to understand. So Fissure is a framework. It's not a complete product. It's not finished. It's gonna look different over time. It's only been out a month. Uh, it's filled with examples of how to do things, and you can kind of use those examples to see what I'm talking about, and you can contribute your own upgrades and uh, maybe different features that you want to see, and uh, use it as a guide for now. Everything can be improved. There's nothing's really truly complete, and, and more can be integrated. And it, I require the feedback from the community to make it better. It, it's there for you to work with and improve. Um, there are hooks for automation, like everything communicates over a hub and you can, it's, it's there. But in the meantime, in the short term, I kind of want to build up the capabilities to make it do some important functions before you start trying to automate things that, that aren't there. Uh, Fissure's meant for everyone. It's, I think experts can expose their cutting edge solutions. It's a place where you can, you can expose it to a wider audience. Professionals can use it to perform their daily tasks. Educators can help teach. Students, hobbyists, developers can, can learn things that they may have not known about. There's a lot of different topics in there that you can peruse and, and kind of see what's going on. Uh, so I'll quickly cover some of these components. Um, I'll talk about what's in there now and what I'm looking for in the future. So the, one of the first things you do is you try to go into an environment and learn something about it. Maybe you find a target device or a signal that you, you want to look at for more analysis. Right now there's a very slow scanning detector built in where you can set up different search bands and it'll slowly scan the spectrum. It's not super useful, I'm, I'm telling you that right now, but it will report back power, frequency, and time and you can use that kind of information to pass it to other components. Now in development, I got a signal conditioner, a feature extractor, a protocol, emitter classifier in the works that I'm working on. 
And uh, the idea behind those is to isolate the signals, extract features like you know frequency bandwidth modulation type, uh, and then kind of take take a stab at uh, identifying protocols emitters using AI and ML techniques. Uh, that's that's kind of in the future, but that's that's what it's going to look like in the future. And uh, I'm also interested in fast scanning components like a hacker F sweep or RTL power uh, techniques to replace that slow scanner or have another option to, to scan. And uh, it, it's going to be a place to swap and compare AI ML t techniques. Protocol discovery. So you take your, your, your information from those signals and you try to, to produce a bit stream from that knowledge, from that target to a bit stream. And uh, there's this concept of recursive demodulation where you uh, load a flow graph with some knowledge of your target, and then you kind of slowly go down and maybe you figure out more about it and you load another flow graph. Maybe there's some confidence about which flow graph you're gonna load next. So that's the idea be behind uh, demodulating unknown signals. And I know that's a very uh, difficult, challenging problem. But uh, right now there's only just the demodulation flow graphs, which is kind of like the last stage where you know what the protocol is, you run the flow graph, it spits out a bit stream. So right now that, that bit stream goes into a circular buffer where you can, you can slice it up, look for preambles, look for CRCs. It's kind of, it's most useful for fixed length messages, but it can be changed uh, to do uh, things that are different lengths. There's a data viewer, we can take those bits uh, turn to hex, apply them to things in your library, see how well it fits. There are custom Wireshark dissectors. There's a CRC calculator uh, where you can you can uh, do common algorithms or, or do like a reverse lookup for finding the polynomial. In the future, I want to build out that recursive part, uh, do more work with pattern recognition and, and variable length messages. Attacks, there are different types of attacks. You can do Python 2 and Python 3 scripts, you just put a simple header on your file and you can change the default values and you just click start and it launches the attack. You can do flow graphs with and without GUIs. Uh, wire, uh, the attacks are meant for wireless or wired applications when you think about it because they're just scripts. You're just running scripts. So you could be on a network, maybe you have a bunch of exploits you want to run. You can, you can do that over a wire. Or, or wirelessly. There are multi-stage attacks where you're just stringing together a uh, bunch of single-stage attacks and they just go in a loop. There is data field fuzzing. So if you have things already in your library, you can check fields, choose random or sequential fuzzing, specify the ranges, and each message it generates, it will recalculate the CRC and spit out a new message. There is also flow graph variable fuzzing where you, you select a flow graph and you can choose the variables in that flow graph and as long as it has callbacks, it will, it will fuzz those variables. In the future, I want more attacks, uh, more hardware support. Right now, there's just examples for different types of hardware. It's not full for every piece of hardware that, that's supported by Fissure. Um, and then there's no vulnerability analysis piece yet where if you're throwing an attack at something, how do you know it worked? How well did it work? You know, that, that piece, that could be put in there as well. IQ manipulation. So there, you, you have the ability to launch live inspection flow graphs with GUIs. You can look at things like waterfalls, time slots, or time sinks. Um, it, it's, there's, there's a lot that you could add to that. I've seen some things here, you know, this week that I'm thinking about adding to it. Um, there's there's a, a record and playback feature right in, right in that section. Um, you can view data. It's really useful for cropping data with just a couple clicks. You can record something, crop it, convert it to different data types, uh, perform analysis with a couple clicks of buttons. And in the future, I want more measurement radar data analysis, filtering capabilities, better inspection flow graphs. There is an online signal archive. It's pretty primitive right now. There's just a couple files in there where you can just click on it and download it from online. And then you can set up playlists to test systems. And it's also useful for testing Fissure itself. So you can select a radio for the playback, 
and then feed it back to like the earlier component where you're doing target signal identification. So you can use it to test itself all in one package. In the future, I gotta figure out a good standardized metadata format, something like SigMF, uh, create more data sets, uh, use existing data sets, figure out how to best import and export these kind of things. There's a packet crafter for crafting things in your library. You can go in, change values, calculate the CRCs, save them to file. Um, you can construct sequences of messages and save them to a file. There's SCAPI integration for Wi-Fi, so if you're already in monitor mode, you can just select a Wi-Fi message, view all the fields, click load, start, SCAPI's transmitting. So in the future, more protocols and packet types, uh, maybe some links right to the attacks from here. Third-party tools. So this is kind of the, the unique thing for Fissure is that it comes with like 100 different third-party tools with the installation steps right there in checkboxes. So this is real valuable for someone who's never done this kind of thing before. And if it worked, it turns green. If it didn't work, it turns red. And uh, most of them can be accessed from the menus under the tool um, menu bar. And then standalone flow graphs exist as well. So you can just load those up and play with them and not mess with the rest of Fissure. Uh, the third party tools are, uh, well, they'll either just launch the application or they'll open a terminal with an example command for how to use it. You can also uh, load up online tools, maps, calculators, databases for things. In the future, I, I want your input on how I can add more things, more different types of things, different protocols and applications. Uh, the installer can always be improved. I'm, I'm learning that. It's never really going to be finished. Um, and I'm also interested in a Docker alternative because there's a lot of software here and it's, it's, gonna, it's not going to play nice with your existing system. So it's best to do this on a staged computer starting fresh. There are lessons in there. Uh, they're, they're written in Markdown and HTML. So if you go online and you look at the lessons folder in the, in the repo, you can load up, for instance, how to take the ham radio exam. I took it this year and uh, my favorite tool to use was Anki. You just, it's free and you just load in the whole question pool and quickly go through all the questions. So that's, that's nice. But then there's other topics there. I'm hoping to expand this and use it for education and tie it back into Fissure, say like do this step in Fissure, see this result. And uh, I think it would be a great tool for helping people learn about all kinds of topics. What does GNU Radio do? Well, uh, it, go, it launches all these different types of flow graphs that I mentioned, um, and it passes data back to Fissure in several different ways. Uh, you can change variables before running the flow graph. You can change variables while running the flow graph. Um, it's a little different right now for uh, running a flow graph with and without a GUI. If, if it has a GUI, I can't really change it before running the flow graph yet. Um, so everything, every variable you want to change has to happen through the widgets in the GUI. But uh, it, I, Fissure is supporting versions 3.7, 3.8, 3.10. They're all separate branches, so I don't have lots of copies of flow graphs all in one repo. Uh, the auto tree modules are pulled from individual, the, the owners of the repos. So they're all, they get cloned every time you uh, do that git sub module. Uh, command to as part of the install. Well, that's going to be need that needs to be monitored just in case those those repos change over time, like they change the branch name or something like that. And I'm always looking for better ways of using GNU radio. There's there's a lot that I'm not doing right, I feel like and I could do better. And uh, I got to keep up with what's what's coming out in the new versions. Uh, next, I'm there's there's a lot of room to evolve as far as the, the governance model. Right now, it's kind of just founder leader, but I'm working towards making it a corporate back model. And there's nothing stopping it from being a duocracy where if someone's contributing and they have good ideas and they're actively doing pull requests and things like that, they can be part of this project. Um, I'm always looking for more funding avenues. To, it speeds up development for the project, establishing more ties with education in the short term, 
look for more documentation at the, the AIS website. Uh, I will be working towards improving the code, testing more hardware, expanding the lessons, uh, the certain features that need to be uh, implemented. And then in long term, maybe move towards more of a sensor node deployment scheme where you're not just in one geographic location, but you can set up multiple sensors that feed back over the network. And uh, I'm not looking to reinvent the wheel in any way. So if I know that all these topics have been done 10 times over by the community at large, and if, there's a, if there are existing solutions out there, I'd rather wrap in those solutions than try to do it myself. So it's, it's important that I get your uh, contributions. So how can you contribute? Well, you can show your interest. That's the most important thing that you can do for me right now is go on the repo, star the repo, join the Discord server, follow on Twitter. It makes it easier for me to go back to my company and say, look at all this interest that we're gathering. And I can go to different customers and say, look at all this interest. And it's more likely to take off if, if you do that right now. You can contact me. The Discord's a good way. The discussions page is a good way. Uh, suggestions. I, I need all these suggestions for all these topics. There's a lot. There's a lot of knowledge here. And just pick one thing and send it to me, and I'll be very grateful for that. And you can collaborate with AIS. Uh, like as a professional thing, or you can just do it on your own individually on, on the repo and things like that. And if you're really into it, you could submit a resume to AIS for full-time employment. We do a lot of cool things. This project is fun to work on, and it has an immediate impact on, on people's lives, so that's something to look forward to. And with that, I'll take questions. Thank you for the talk. Um, I have a question. Were there things that you found that had those features been in GNU Radio, it would have made the integration easier? Or you know, features that were missing from GNU Radio that, that were? Um... Well, yes. If, uh, if GNU Radio did more, um, if it more was built into it, that would be nicer. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, a lot of the the pieces that I'm writing for working with flow graphs and things like that, uh, I'm, I'm using GNU Radio. I'm not using third-party pieces other than like out of tree modules and whatnot. But there, there are things that are, are, are more difficult than others to work with. And, it, and I'm probably just touching the surface of what GNU Radio is actually doing. And there's probably better things I can do to improve my software. So I need to learn more. I need to hear about more that I could do. Thank you. All right. Any more questions? So I have a question. So there's there's some other tools in the sort of RF um, you know security world, but like they seem like yours seems more more encompassing. There's like fuzzing tools, etc. Like um, have you like compared like have you, have you compared like pressure to those like we had a we had a talk about um rf fuzzing like i don't know like a few geocons ago I, but i forgot the name of the tool like are you like sort of aware of those those projects and that, um like so what's the relation between fisher and, and and like other rf fuzzing tools or any other like in, you know security related tools well there's there's tons of tools out there and i'm aware of a lot of them there's hundreds of tools um but fissure is unique in that it puts everything together in one place um so i had i had this software that, that allows you to do everything in one place um i know there are dozens of other things that are similar but nothing quite fills the what this does like there are vms out there there are um lists of of tools that you can install mm -hmm. there are individual things for uh decoding messages and figuring out protocols and things like that but it's it's not all in one place and it's not easy for someone to just go in 
and add something new or contribute and, or change something or see the code. So it, it does a lot of things that other things don't do. But for, for fuzzing and things like that, uh, I haven't really seen a heck of a lot that's useful to me and that's, that's easily uh, installable and things like that. So I don't know, I'll have to look more into that. And have you been able to find any flags for the, with Fisher? <laughs> um, I haven't had much time to do the CTF, but uh, <laughs> I, w I will be trying to do it. And that's, that's one thing, when I do all these CTFs and things like that, I see how people solve them. And I take those lessons and I try to put it into Fissure. Like I built a, a Morse code decipher in there for like the DEF CON CTF and stuff like that. So the more I learn about how the CTFs work, the more I can put it right in the software. 